Father, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, we exalt your holy name. We say there's none that can be compared unto you, Lord. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your kindness in our lives. Thank you for being God to us, O Lord. We exalt your holy name, O Lord. Father, O Lord, we sang our heart cry this morning, O Lord. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will not take your Holy Spirit away from us in Jesus' name. The grace to walk with you and be perfect, O Lord, we receive in the name of Jesus, O Lord. Thank you, O Lord, because you are God. As we go, Lord, into um, teaching this morning, speak to us in Jesus' name. Touch our heart in the name of Jesus, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God. We really did not sing over. Well. Are we cold? No. I was only. <laughs> Please. Uh, uh, ah. Let us. Uh, may God help us in the name of Jesus. Um, so this morning, I actually think that God has been talking to us. Please let us set you down. Let us set you down. I actually think God has been talking to us for the past, maybe the third week now, about um, his kingdom about holiness, about, about uh, consecration, about how to live holy. And that's because um, it was Brother Nakati that first started with um, God requires it. And what does God require? God requires it in a body. Uh, the topic, born again. Born again. Like you said, Uma, holiness. Without holiness, you cannot see Christ. You cannot get to eternal kingdom. And Pastor Dami came here last week and he talked about and the believer, and the believer. And um, so we, as a Christian, as believers, we have a lot of sacrifices as we journey, as we move on, as we, as we, as we try to, as we go to into the um, eternal kingdom. But beyond that, he said, um, obedience trumps that. Obedience is better than sacrifice. And when you look at the life of um, Solomon, for example, he made a lot of sacrifices, but Solomon's obedience was in, was in full, was in full. So sometimes people come, they, are, they spend money in church, they do all that, you know, they do, they do things that are somehow convenient for them. Things that are somehow convenient for them. And that's exactly why Jesus said the widow that gave a uh, little, she gave the most because it wasn't convenient for her. So, you know, the, I believe the, everything is tied to, to what we are about to um, speak about today, this morning again. I, be, I believe we have it in our mind. We have uh, the, our phones. So this morning we're talking about um, conscience. Conscience. And our memory verse is taken from um, Romans 1, verse 21. Can we see that there? Uh, can we see the memory verse? Okay. okay. Romans 1, verse 21. Well, while we wait for the media, let's um, we can go ahead. When they knew God, they glorified him not as God. When they knew God, they glorify him not as God. 21. And our uh, um, text is taken from Romans 1, 23 to 32. I want somebody to read that for us. Romans 1, 23 to 32. Anybody? Anybody? And God, instead of worshipping the glorious and instead of worshipping the glorious ever living God, they worshipped idols made to look like mere people and birds and animals and reptiles. So God abandoned them to do whatever shameful things their hearts desired. As a result, they did vile and degrading things with each other's bodies. They traded the truth about God for a lie. So they worshipped and served the things God created instead of the creator himself who is worthy of eternal praise. Amen. That is why God abandoned them to their shameful desires. Even the women turned against the natural way to have sex and instead indulged in sex with each other. And the men, instead of having normal sexual relations with women, bond with lust for each other. Men did shameful things with other men. And as a result of this sin, they suffered within themselves the penalty they deserved. Since they thought it foolish to acknowledge God, he abandoned them to their foolish thinking and let them do things that should never be done. 
their lives became full of every kind of wickedness, sin, greed, hate, envy, murder, quarreling, deception, malicious behavior, and gossip. They are backstabbers, haters of God, insolent, proud, and boastful. They invent new ways of sinning, and they disobey their parents. They refuse to understand, break their promises, are heartless, and have no mercy. They know God's justice requires that those who do these things deserve to die, yet they do them anyway. Worse yet, they encourage others to do them too. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, man. May God not leave us um, on our own. May God not leave us to perish in Jesus' name. Um, it's okay to interject at any point or let me know if you have anything to say or had. Uh, but I'm going to read into int introduction. We're going to come back to the text, I believe, at some point. Or even or maybe refer to it. So um, to you, what is conscience? To the house, what is conscience? I think it's an inner belief that judges you or con I won't say judge that convicts you of good or bad. Amen. Any other person? So for the unbeliever, I think conscience could be like that inner voice, but for the believer, I think the conscience is the Holy Spirit. Thank you. You can say it's the surface without trying to be theological. No, it doesn't matter. Conscience could be said is the gauge or the, yeah, the gauge that we have as human beings that determines whether what we are doing is right or what we are doing is wrong. It's an internal system, an internal gauge that monitors or judges our actions and tells us whether we are doing the right thing or whether we are doing the wrong thing. Okay. Amen. Uh, I see Ariana's point about conscience and spirit and all that, but uh, I think we're going to leave it at conscience. As we're going to understand them as we proceed. I'm going to read this. Introduction, what is conscience? Conscience is an internal judge examine all that I do and say. You want to say that yourself? There's a Yoruba word that says, I'll say it in Yoruba. Meaning that when you are wrong, <laughs> so your conscience is telling you, <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> may God help us in the name of Jesus. He cries out before any wrongdoing. That's your conscience now. He does, he does not keep quiet during the act and keeps talking even after the act. Before the act, and it doesn't stop talking, even after the act. The word conscience does not appear in the Old Testament. Instead, the word act. Yeah, you're going to pardon me on that. So sometimes I say heart is E, it's not E E L T H, it's H E R O L T H. You should, you should know that by now. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, first, let me back. Who has a conscience? Is it reserved for educated and civilized people only? No. All have consciences. Second Corinthians 4 2, we're going to come back to that. So, conscience is not just um, two types, you know, not good and bad. You know, that would be, that, that, that would sound logical. But conscience is not just um, good or bad. Based on our outlines, we have about seven. We have about seven uh, outlines here. I believe maybe you know there could be more, but we have our seven outlines here from um, A to G. If you have the manual, that's what the manual says. But I, I believe that um, even in the Church of God, we are all in one, in one of these stages. I just don't know where you are. You know, but if you set your your heart very well, you will know where you are. But in the Church of God, we have from A, from evil conscience, to G. Conscience devoid of offense. That's the goal, devoid of offense. So I want us to give, um, no, let me go to a, a, a evil conscience. I'll read that, the outline first before we go into it. 
Not all consciences are good. In fact, since the fall of man in the garden of Eden, many consciences had become darkened and defiled. The conscience of man suffered terribly in the fall. It is an evil conscience that directs a man to bow down and worship an idol. Not just idols as we know them, you know, but idols, money, job, whatever. It is an evil conscience that rationalizes when a son who does not want to kill becomes a murderer. He rationalizes. So that is sometimes people sin, but to now justify the sin now. It is an evil conscience that accuses a man of being an antisocial, an antisocial when he refuses to entertain with alcoholic drinks or to partake in an immoral gathering. First Romans 16.32, we read, we read that already. Our passage today tells the terrible story of what happens when consciences be, becomes defiled, deprived, or evil. Before I mention one or two things here, I want us to go back to that introduc um, to introduction. Let's read Romans. Uh, no, let's read, um, not Romans now. 1 Samuel 24.5 is there. 1 Samuel 24.5. So that we'll see what, I, what that introduction was saying about before that your, your conscience is always talking. Before. Yeah. It's conscience. Before the baby, this conscience was bothering him after, after, after cutting the, the, the robe of Saul. Let's look at Second, um, Second Samuel 24.10. Second Samuel 24.10. Anybody? But after he had taken the census, David's conscience began to bother him. And he said to the Lord, I have sinned greatly by taking this census. Please forgive my guilt, Lord, for doing this foolish thing. You see, um, if you look at this story from the beginning, one of his generals, Joab, was telling him, why do you want to do the census? You are the king anyway, over one, over two, over 30, over 10,000. But his heart wasn't convicting him. His heart wasn't saying the same, even though they were, they were, they were, um, they, they were, um, the general was telling him. It is the same with some of us, or most of us, or all of us. Sometimes when people are warning you that, can't this person see that this thing is just wrong? But until your own heart is telling you that, no, you are not, been, um, you are not on the right path, you, you're most likely not going to listen. Because he said, if you look at it, he said, I have sinned greatly. But until when he came to that realization, until when he came to that realization, it didn't, it didn't look like a sin, at least to him. So we say, oh, but this brother should know. This sister should know. No, sometimes they don't. But the problem with that is, may God not let them um, get into the ditch before realizing it, that's the arm with that. That's the arm with the after the fact. Before is always better. So you're able to catch yourself. After the fact is always, sometimes some people have soft landing, but it's not always the case. Sometimes you learn the hard way. Sometimes you learn the hard way. So they, they warned him, Joab told him, Why don't do so? For what reason? For what purpose? You are the king already. So what's the point? But he did not see. But he came to that point and he said, I have sinned. So he didn't realize all along that he was going to sin. He didn't realize it even though he was one. But his heart told him. So our heart usually will tell us what is good and what is bad. It's up to us to listen, to yield to the, Holy, to the leading of the Holy Spirit. Uh, for the evil conscience, I want us to mention maybe two examples in the Bible. So that, that maybe that will help us to talk. Two examples. Anybody in the Bible. We have, from Genesis to Revelation, we have a lot of people that did terrible things, believe me. <laughs> Be, <maybe>. Judas. <laughs> Judas. Cain. Ananias and Sephira. Ananias and Sephira. Yes, ma'am. Somehow, when I was looking at um, that, the story of um, Herod and Herodias came to my mind. 
you know, because um, Herod was the king. Yes, ma'am. I don't really see the evil conscience in. Uh, I was going to come to it actually. No. So that exactly. Because Wait, they please. intended to do that, and if not that, um, um, intended. Uh, it. Sorry, no, sorry. They, they did it. If not that, um, what's his name? Um, Peter. Which is that Peter caught them. They would have gone with the lie. But we're not told that the, the, the evil questions told them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, I don't know. Maybe we'll, we'll, don't know. we'll come to it. It is not a good question. For us, we know. But to them, they might not even know. Just, it might be part of, let's do it like that. It's part of them. Can conspire to lie. Yes. Yeah. To lie. Mm. And there was nothing in their heart that told them this is the truth and this is not the way. They might not know. No. To us, we, I know we all know that it is it is not good. But to them, they might feel it's part of being woke to them in those days. I don't know. I I really don't know. Okay, let me not cause any. But I I just feel that they they might not know. I think at the very minimum, if you look at the story very well. So I, I think um, I, I understand what she's saying, but again, I, um, what Pastor Bumi is saying and uh, what Pastor Bode is saying is um, the context of the fact that they were all believers at that point in time. So as a believer, there's a basic requirement you should um, be operating at. You know, so if you are an unbeliever, it's allowed. You know, but when you're already within the sanctuary of believers or within the context of brethren, we know you know what you should do and what you shouldn't do. So, I, I, yeah. Oh, no. Act, oh, no. Act, uh, yes, ma'am. Acts chapter 5. Yeah, 5, yeah. Acts chapter 5. So that we can move on, sir. Yes, ma'am. Acts chapter 5. Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife, Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has so filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received from the land? Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have, just lied, you have not just lied to human beings but to God. And then he fell and died. Yeah, so at the very mass, I was going to say at the very minimum, it doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or not. Agreement is agreement. You see, this is the thing. They all agreed that they were going to bring their cell and bring their stuff to the church and everything, then we share. If we are not going to be part of them, let them know at that point that I'm not part of this. My money is my money. My land is my land. But for you to eat, wine, dine, leading the church on, that when it gets your turn, you're going to provide, a, what do we call that? A black bag, Inca's department. Turn of hospitality, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you are now nowhere to be, to be found. After agreeing as a church, we didn't just come up with that. You know, people came and we all agreed. If let them know, let your yes be yes, let your nay be nay. It doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or not. Even when if you are out there in your job, if you don't agree, let them know that this is my stand. Of course, I'm going to go with you, but just so you know that this is where I am. You know, so that way it's clear. But in the case of Ayana and Safira, they they lied. So they sold the money. They kept some, thinking in their own mind that, okay, we're wise. We're going to use this for children's school fees. Good reason, to be honest with you. But still, that doesn't just... What about the others that brought all their all? What about the one that brought their all? Maybe you even carried home out of it. You know, so, I mean, I'm so sorry. <laughs> May God help us. So, when I was looking at this, so, um, that clear this man. Yeah, so, yeah. So, it doesn't matter whether you're a Christian or not. Like I said... They, had, they, they lied. They deceived the Holy Spirit. You know? And I'm sure the other people were not happy too. You know? So, but when I was looking at it, I was looking at the case of Herod and um, Herodias. And that's because the prophet had told them the truth. You know? But they, they didn't want to hear. And as a result, they killed him. 
So I want to say that we have a lot of um, errors and erodias in, in palaces of the world. Kings that are ruling over us. Evil conscience. It doesn't bother them whether you live or whether you die. Sometimes you have them, we have them as bosses. It doesn't matter if you lose your job, I don't care. You know, be, they, they're willing to take the food from your mouth. If your children are going to go homeless, if your wife it doesn't bother them, their conscience is just evil. Their conscience is just evil. And we have them in the church as well. That's the truth. Because, you see, we like to think that the church is perfect, but the church is not. That's the truth of the matter. Because Jews, Judas was following Jesus, and he sold Jesus for how, many, how much? 30 shillings. So imagine what he would do to Peter. Imagine what, imagine what he would do to Peter and any other disciple. So in the church, the church is not a perfect place. So when people do things, don't take it to heart. We are all not, we are in different stages. Even based on this manual here, we are in different places in the church. You know, so if you are, if you are grown or you are, how do I say this now, spiritually sound, or maybe you are there impatient, don't look at somebody that is still struggling. At, why is this person still coming to church? They are work in progress. I believe God strongly that they will get there too by the grace of God. You know, may God help us in the name of Jesus. You know, um, and that's very important because even we, even when you have, um, when your conscience is clear, the Bible still asks us that we should cast down, you know, imaginations. They come. They come. You know, sometimes you, you have to tell yourself, ah, but where did that come from? God help me here. You know, God help me here. So it's not, um, it's, um, the Bible asks us to um, run this race with fear and with trembling every day. It's a daily thing. We carry that cross and you run every day. So it's not, it's not about my church. Oh, my church is, oh, they gossip too much. Oh, God, they do this too much. No, it's the church of God. It's the church of God. Jesus said he didn't come for the people that are well. He came for the sick. He came for the sick. So we're going to move to B. Um, can somebody read that for us? Convicted conscience. Um, conscience. The, the, the manual. Yes, ma'am. The manual. Yes, ma'am. Okay. When a man hears the true gospel of Christ, the Holy Spirit quickens the word of God in his heart, and his conscience becomes convicted. As he hears about sin and judgment for sin, his conscience begins to judge him bearing witness to the truth in the word of God, then the hearer does one or two things. Either he yields to the working of the Holy Spirit or he excuses himself. Romans 2.15. A common excuse is to say that he is not the only sinner in the world, that all men are sinners, that if God is going to judge, he will judge everybody, that the preacher himself is a sinner anyway, mm -hmm. so why bother? But those who yield to the promptings of the Holy Spirit start feeling sorrow for their sin, and soon they are on their way to repentance. John 8, 1 to 11 is a good example of a conscience in action. We're going to read um, that um, John 8, 1 to 11. But the Bible says um, that um, godly sorrow worketh what? Repentance, repentance unto, unto salvation. But uh, um, worldly sorrow? leads to death, death. So if you offend somebody, forgive them. You see, we all do stuff. We all do things. But be kind enough if your conscience is telling you. But like I said, you know, people do stuff and your conscience is not telling you. To him that knows how to do good and do it not, to that person is what? Is a, a sin. But if your conscience is not bothering you, then you are not seeing it like the case of Samuel. Samuel just did not see it until he, he came to that realization. So if, you, if, you, if your conscience is telling you that, beg sister, so, 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 beg brother, so, 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 don't let pride stand in your way. Just go ahead and apologize. Your conscience is already telling you. My wife will tell me, ah, so you just want to continue like that. You didn't even apologize for what you did. 
Because sometimes you want to do it stylishly. You want to start another conversation. Oh, by the way, how are you doing? I said, no, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Let's go back. <laughs> ah, and you came and you are acting as if nothing happened. Of course, something happened, but you know. <laughs> so don't do it stylishly. Now, oh, do you want cake? Oh, do you want... No, apologize for what you did. Don't let pride come in, you know. It doesn't hurt, right? Uh, ah, there's no sorry, baby. It must come from, the, from here, from your heart. So let's read John 8, 1 to 11, very quickly. John 8, 1 to 11. One to eleven, Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives, and early in the morning he came again into the temple, and all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. And the scribes and Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they say unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us. That such be stoned. But what said thou? This they said, tempting him, that they might have to accuse, the, they might have to accuse him. But Jesus stooped, stooped down and, and with his finger wrote on the ground, as thought he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast first a stone at her, and again he stopped down and wrote on the ground, and they, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the elders, even unto the last, and Jesus was left alone, and the woman standing in the midst, when Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman, he said unto her, woman, where are those thy accusers? Hath, hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Amen. So he said, Go and sin no more. So do we think that woman probably sinned after that? <laughs> huh? She did? So I'll, maybe I'll, this will be my point there that even after you encounter Jesus, mm. you're still mostly going to sin. Your heart is going to tell you now, though, that this is not right, that is not right, that's not right, that's not right. Apologize to this. Don't go there. Come here. Even after you encounter Jesus. So you don't, when people hear now, it doesn't matter their status. Don't kill them. I'm not justifying, I'm just saying, yes, sir. People ask that. People say they that. never <laughs> spoke <laughs> of the man, but just the woman. The man ran away. He also could, maybe, maybe it was just the environment that they were at the time, you know. The, but yeah, they brought the woman. Yes, sir. And also, I, I just I wanted to share something that happened to me about conscience. So, I went to the store two days ago to buy something, so I did self-checkout. So in the process, you know, I did everything and I was at home. So usually whenever I buy stuff, I check my, you know, my sleep and see if I, you know, took everything. But there was an item on the list that was there that I wanted to buy, but I was like, you know, I'm not buying. So it's in my, in my, in my bag. And then I was like, oh yeah. A part of me said, oh yeah, since, you know, he's here, you know, you don't have to think about it. But my conscience kept telling me. The first thing I gave to my mother, you are fasting, and this thing is not, like, <laughs> the amount is, like, minimal. Like, you could have said, you know what, yeah, it's nothing. So, yesterday night, it was, like, I, when we got home after the uh, workers' meeting, I still did some errands. Then I went back. So, I went to the self-checkout again. I scanned the item and left it. I was, I was leaving. And the lady said, oh, you're not picking. I said, oh, sorry. I came here, I bought this item, but I didn't pick it, so I came back to pay because I'm going. And they were looking at me like, ah, is this guy okay? I said, yes. I said, yeah. It was in my bag, then I had to come and pay because it doesn't belong to me. I need to pay you for your service. So 
just sharing that there are sometimes some little things that we do you know like jumping mm -hmm. the tickets fee and say you know what i need oh, to sorry, catch yeah. the train and you don't have to pay sometimes for the efforts you're right but like i said some people don't know they are right from wrong you know and they are they justify yes ma Yeah, but, uh, I think that's going to be purge conscience. Purge, you know. But some people after they, like they, like the serial killers, for example, sometimes they kill without any remorse. Ah. Mm. Evil. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's, um, mm. Why you say evil? Yeah, it could be, but not. And this guy's own, what was his name? Just his carrot. That was evil intent. He had evil in him to do that. And the person that you said. But that for that conscience, I will not call it evil. I'm not convinced. But thank you. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not case that you might not be convinced about something because some, so many times we see things differently. You might not be convinced about it. That doesn't mean another person does not see it as evil. Do I see it as evil? I might not see it as evil, but somebody else might. And it's okay for us to have different um, um, reaction to things. Some things that somebody will do, the same thing that Barayinka did, and they will say, well, I did not intend to steal it. I'm not going to go back. Because it was, it was, it was not his intention to not pay for it. So in that case, his own it cannot even be con compared to Ananias and Sapphira because it was a plan. He did not plan to steal. He went there and mistakenly did not pay for it while he was packing his stuff and he took it back. It was a good conscience that told him you have to return it back. If the person did not return it back, I do, I'm not God. I don't know how God would judge that. But the intention was not to steal it. So it's different. Praise the Lord. So I just want to say, it's okay that you feel the way you feel. It's all right. And everybody have different um, reactions to things. This is what I know. Sin is sin. No matter how, no matter how small, no matter how big. And the wages of sin is what? Dead. Unfortunately for uh, them, they didn't have a second chance. Some of that, sometimes you get a lot of second chances. It's like Deborah. Um, so this convicted conscience and what you're saying about how like anyone can, for reminded me of there's one sermon my mom sent me during the week and it was about um, the man called, man called flesh or can you come flesh. The theology of the preacher was that temptation will always like be there. Like it's always like regardless of how great of an anointing you get like temptation is like it will always be mm -hmm. there and he was like if you are someone that let's say you are a pastor maybe your vice is being greedy and maybe for the how many 10 years you have been successful in like pushing down that urge of greed the one day that you become greedy you have striked out all 10. so i think all the reason i want to make this contribution is that something that he ended up saying was that like you can't he's like Pushing down your temptation is not enough. You have to like go to God specifically to take it out of you. Because he said that it's not what it's not it's like it's what is inside you that is what comes out. It's not something that is not inside you that will come out. So just a reminder, number one, that we have to be very intentional about like walking temptation. If you are like, oh, you have an urge, and then you're like, oh, I beat it today. Praise God, but that shouldn't be the end of the story. Like it should be, you should be intentional about this temptation. Like take it take out. Take it of away. You. Take it away. Like temptation itself is not saying yielding to it. So in a, and if you keep fleeing, 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 for how long are you going to win? <laughs> so we, it's better for God to just take it away. Pastor, sir, you want to say something? Okay. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Yes, sir. Okay, we talked about um, conscience and evil conscience. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, when you are evil, you have shut out God from your mouth. See, you don't want to even hear. Even God comes in for your fault and tell you go back, you still go. You have shut out. And the level of response to our conviction depends on your level of dependence on the Holy Spirit. Okay, the Holy Spirit told him, 
that thing is you picked, you stole, you could not sleep. I, it has happened to me before in Nigeria. I was fasting. I entered the bus. Conductor jumped me, did not collect money. I came down. I walked 10 meters. Police police say, you did not pay. I went back. I bought that money. I gave it to the con bus conductor. He looked at me. Very, very strange. I said, never see this carpet for Lagos before. He collected the money, and I went away happy. So it depends on your level of conviction. You may be convicted in a way. You may just mm, push it aside. You may be con so it depends on your level of yieldedness to the Holy Spirit. And uh, man, if I may say, Judas was not really an evil guy. Judas was being fraudulent. Because Jesus could do miracles. He has seen Jesus do a lot of things before. So he thought that when they come to arrest Jesus, he'll just say, Holy Ghost, oh yeah, they'll all be slain. And Jesus will walk away and he'll pocket that money. It was his conviction of what he had done that made him to go and hang himself. He was a fraudster. I've read a, a, a bit about Judas. He just thought that that, that it, uh, is additional money. That when they come to arrest Jesus, that Jesus can just disappear and go to an place because he has seen Jesus do a lot of miracles. So catching Jesus okay. was just a little, little uh, yes, thing sir. for him. May God Praise help us. I'm, I'm trying to, I don't want us to put spirits with, um, with, with the heart of God. There's a difference. You see, you have the, the whether you are born again or not, you have the, the good and the bad heart. For example, some people are morally upright. They, they have good heart. But they don't have no spirit. So I don't want to, I'm, I've been trying to, I don't, they don't have the Holy Spirit here. But the heart is there. They just won't steal for the sake of, I don't want to steal. Not because there's God somewhere. So I don't want to go, it's another, it's, that's another level. You know, because the Bible says, what man knoweth the things of man, save the spirit of man that is in him. What man knoweth the things of God, save the spirit of God that is in him. So it's, it's possible for you to have a heart and not have the Holy Spirit. But you are a good person. So it's, it, I don't want, because I, I want this, I want to leave it like this, basic. But there's also the spiritual part of it. Like that, that's a dimension that now you have to add to it. So let's go to the purge, purge conscience. When a man used to the working of the Holy Spirit in his heart, his, his awakened conscience brings pressure on him to conform to God's stand on sin. And his righteousness, he begins to realize the devil of a deprived conscience. And the conviction leads to conversion of, uh, or salvation. His conscience becomes purged, just like uh, Bora Nyinka just told us. I remember my wife had, I don't know, I, I forgot what happened now, but she came, oh, she said, oh, all I mean by the way, it didn't happen that way. I said, oh, the Holy Spirit won't let you rest. <laughs> I also know the feeling myself. You know, you, you can't wait to get to the work. I have to tell my boss this. Oh, it didn't happen that way. I'm very sorry. You know, because sometimes we, we just kind of lie to run away from it. But now, through, from Monday to fr Friday to Sunday, Monday morning, your conscience is bothering you. Oh, I have to go and correct this. I, in fact, sometimes you wake up early because almost as if you are finding hard to, to sleep. If your conscience is alive, you wake up, you, you take a bath and you run inside the office. I must fix this. I must fix this. That is the conscience that's up. You know why? You see the case of the woman when Jesus said, go and sin no more. Jesus wasn't really talking about the sin that she committed. commit next. Jesus was talking about the eternal kingdom. So that I will see you in the, in the kingdom. You run this race with this. Go and sin no more. Be conscious of sin. The end goal is for you to get to the kingdom. I'm not talking about the sin that you're going to commit next or the one after. But be conscious because the time no man knew it. So be conscious of eternal kingdom. Go and sin no more. So you want to correct it. Let Jesus, Jesus will come and you'll be shut out. Amen? So weak conscience. Let's read very quickly Romans 8, 7 to 13. Romans 8. Let somebody read that for us very quickly. Just about maybe a couple of minutes. Romans 8. Are we there? Again, oh, sorry. Yeah. I said Corinthians, please. I'm sorry. Ah. I'm so sorry. First Corinthians 8. We'll start from 7. Um, so. yeah, 7. However, not all believers know this. Some are accustomed to thinking of idols as being real. 
So when they eat food that has been offered to idols, they think of it as the worship of real gods, and their weak consciences are violated. Continue to 13, I said. Oh. It is true that we cannot, we can't win God's approval by what we eat. We don't lose anything if we don't eat it, and we don't gain anything if we do. But you must be careful so that your freedom does not cause others with a weaker conscience to stumble. For if others see you with your superior knowledge eating in the temple of an idol, wouldn't they be encouraged to violate their conscience by eating good, eating food that has been offered to an idol? So because of your superior knowledge, a weak believer for whom Christ died will be destroyed. And when you sin against other believers by encouraging them to do something they believe is wrong, you are sinning against Christ. So if what I eat causes another believer to sin, I'll never eat meat again <laughs> as long as I live. But I don't want to cause another, for I don't want to cause another believer to stumble. Amen. Amen. May God help us. Uh, very quickly, I'll mention two things here very fast. I was, I was, I used to be a victim of this, and I'll tell us why. Um, for I, I wear jewels like chain, and chain rings, and those things. If, like if you look at my old pictures and all that, you know, from even from college, high school, those days, just in me. But um, a time, a time came that my conscience was bothering me that. Stop, take note of me. I'm not talking about. So now, but now I'm a Christian. I did, I just did, I couldn't make sense of it because I was looking at fathers in faith with that as well. But I said, but this is a person with, how does this bother God in any way? But my conscience just won't let me rest. You can't have it. You can't have it. You can't do it. It's not a sin. Every day I will come to church, or sometimes on Sunday. Sometimes I'll go to the bathroom, I'll take everything off. I'll put them in my pocket. Now, during the week, I'll justify the girl. It's nothing. This is just jewelry. But it was too much. A time came, I said, you know what? I'm just going to dump all this. And I did. So I want us to be careful. As a church, sometimes we do things that we are not thinking about people that, are, that have weak consciences, that their conscience is not strong. They, they just say, oh, if pastors so, so, so should do, can do this, then I'll do it too. Sometimes we are in the church garden and we are playing worldly songs. We will shake it off. But some people, it will stay with them. Oh, I like my church. What part do you like oh, when we gather together? But not the word of God. Not the word of God. So these are things that we must be conscious of. Because you yourself, you are standing. But you, 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 you don't know that someone is... Huh? All right, all right. Okay. Um, so we have to be conscious of this as a church. Otherwise... Somebody else is going to fall through your actions or in actions. And, it's probably, and the Bible says it's better for, if, that if you have done this unto God, you have done it unto me. It's the, it's, the, it's the same thing. If you make them to stumble and you think, oh, I'm on my way to, the, this, um, to heaven and this person, that's their own headache. No, it's also your own headache as well. Yes, do you want to go to, um, the online? Because, yes, and, sir. Yes. So we received a comment from Pastor Nike, and she says, some things are not outright sin in the context of, sorry, one minute, in the context of Ten Commandments, but if it is against your conscience, if your conscience is seared, it will make it difficult for you to be sensitive to the nature of sin. And we have Christ as advocate when we sin and repent. Holiness is critical to walking with God. Thank you. Amen. Amen. May God help us in the name of Jesus. So we have a pure conscience, good conscience, and um, conscience that devoid of... These are good consciences, you know. It's just um, you have to keep... I believe the goal of Christianity is to get, keep getting better. Keep getting better, you know, until you get to that place that, you know... I mean, there's no way we get to that we'll be standing, but at least we know you, 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 are, you, are, you are doing your best and your conscience is alive. I pray that the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus. Deborah, please pray for us. Amen. 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 We thank for gift of life. We thank for allowing us to have another wonderful tre treasures from heaven. Let your name be forever exalted in Jesus' name. I pray to you that even as we are leaving this, Father, let our 
conscience be prickled in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Name. Let us hearken to the words of our conscience in the mighty name of Jesus. Name. Amen. Grant us the grace to not unknowingly sin against you in Jesus' name. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray. Amen. Amen. In Jesus' name.